Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And today's video comes out of Texas and this is a case that happened way back in the 90s. I remember this case very vividly when it happened. Um, a black man was dragged for over three miles to his death. He was chained to a truck. It was just awful and um, it, it made national news and uh, it was even an incident where a radio host was fired from his job, a disc jockey. He was like a shock jock because of some insensitive comments that he made. And so you heard about the case for a while and then it just went away. So I had no idea that this man uh, had even gotten a death penalty until I was just trying to find an article to talk about tonight. So before we get started with this video, if you enjoy the videos on this channel, if you enjoy the commentary on this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. So let's get into the article. Avowed racist executed for black man's dragon death. Now, how often in America do we hear about a, a white man or a white person, period, being put to death for killing uh, an African American? Okay. So this was very shocking to me because I, you know, you don't, you hardly ever hear about this. Normally in America, if a white person uh, commits a crime to a, against a black person, especially a, a, a murder or sometimes they find some way to get them off. Okay. You don't have to agree with me. This is my opinion. I'm African American and I'm going by what I observe from my point of view. An avowed racist who orchestrated one of the most gruesome hate crimes in U.S. history, was executed Wednesday in Texas for the dragging death of a black man. Okay, I just happened to run across this story. You know, as big as this story was back in the 90s, why wasn't this a big deal? You know, African Americans need to hear stories like this, you know, that in some cases we are being vindicated. Now, am I a proponent of the death penalty? Um, I have mixed feelings about the death penalty, you know, to be honest, if the person is guilty and it was a heinous crime, I'm for the death penalty. Okay. And that's just me. Everybody's entitled to their own beliefs, their own opinions. Uh, but if you're not sure if that person is, is guilty, I'm not for it. You know, the only problem I have with the death penalty is that I do believe that there are many people on death row particularly uh, black men on death row for crimes they had, did not commit and who have been murdered by the states for crimes they didn't commit. That's my only hiccup about the death penalty. John William King, who was white, received lethal injection for the slaying near, nearly 21 years ago of James Byrd Jr., who was chained to the back of a truck and dragged for nearly three miles along a secluded road in the Piney Woods outside Jasper, Texas. The 49-year-old Bird was alive for at least two miles, oh my gosh, before the body was ripped into pieces in the early morning hours of June 7th, 1998. Can you imagine being tied to a back of a truck by your ankles and they just driving with you just dragging along the street and then your body starts ripping apart? This man had to be screaming and yelling and, you know, I, I just can't, um, I just can't imagine it. I just can't imagine. That was just so heinous. What kind of evil lives in a person that is able to carry out something like that? You know, what kind of evil lives into a, in a person? And then they get the, the dignity of dying of lethal injection while this man suffered on his last minutes on earth. He, they, they, they get to go to sleep and just go off to death. Mm, mm, mm. King was openly racist and had offensive tattoos on his bodies, including one of a black man with a noose around his neck hanging from a tree, according to authorities. So this man was clearly a racist, okay? And we have a lot of them all over the world. But when you actually go out and kill people because of the color of their skin, it's just ridiculous. King, 44, was put to death at the state penitentiary in Huntsville, Texas. He was the fourth inmate executed this year in the U.S. and the third in Texas, 
the nation's busiest capital punishment state. Now, I've seen documentaries on this. Texas, they do put a lot of people to death. <laughs> they are really big on capital punishment. And, you know, I'm not all the time convinced that they're putting to death uh, guilty people. I believe several innocent people have died in the state of Texas. King kept his eyes closed, coward, as witnesses arrived in the death chamber and never turned his head towards the relatives of his victim. Asked, asked by uh, Warden Bill Lewis if he had a final statement, King replied no. So this tells me he had absolutely no remorse. He took his racism with him to, to death. You know, sometimes when people are on their deathbed or they come in, they know they're coming closer to their death, they start having a change of heart. But this man was so solid in his belief and his hatred that he couldn't even apologize to the families, to the community for what he had done. Within seconds, the lethal dose of the sedative penobarbital or penobarbital began taking effect. He took a few barely audible breaths and no other movements. He was pronounced dead at 7.08 p.m. Central Standard Time, 12 minutes after the drug was administered. Okay, so he died. It, I mean, it sounds like it was peaceful. James Byrd didn't get that peaceful death. All right, so I know we have laws and rules that we have to follow when it comes to executing people. But this man, James, suffered, okay, and they're describing his death. And it just seems like, you know, he took his last breath and just went on to sleep. With no fighting it, with nothing. He just drifted off. King's appellate lawyers had tried to stop his execution, arguing that King's constitutional rights were violated because his trial attorneys didn't present his claims of innocent and conceded his guilt. So I'm not sure how he was caught in this. I don't know if he's saying that they got the wrong person, um, but a jury convicted him and there had to be ample ev evidence if it was three of them together. But I'm going to show you the video um, at the end so that you can watch a little back history of this case. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected King's last minute appeal. From the time of, of indictment through his trial, Mr. King maintained his absolute innocence, claiming that he had left his co-defendant and Mr. Byrd sometime prior to his death and was not present at the scene of his murder. Mr. King repeatedly expressed to defense counsel that he wanted to present his innocence claim at trial. At a, uh, a. Richard Ellis, one of King's attorneys, wrote in his petition to the Supreme Court. Okay, so what he's saying is, yeah, I was there when James Byrd was there, but I left. The other two killed him. I didn't have anything to do with it. That's what he's trying to say, and that he was not allowed to express his innocent innocence. And I think that is going to be the end of the story. So he, you know... He's saying that he's innocent, you know, like they like they all say that they're innocent. I'm not sure what the evidence was with this trial, you know, what evidence was presented. Uh, I, DNA, I don't know. I don't know how they tied him to this, this case. All I know is that James Byrd is dead. He was in the company of this gentleman and two other men. And he was dragged for over three miles and his body ripped into pieces. And for two of those miles, he was alive. So I'm glad to see that some justice was done in this case. And that, um, you know, because so many times a lot of our uh, black men, uh, boys, and sometimes girls, you know, they, we get caught up in violence that we don't deserve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the news clip and the news clip is going to give you some history. It's about two minutes long about this case. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
expected to execute the man who orchestrated one of the most infamous hate crimes in recent U.S. history. John William King will be executed in Huntsville. It's near Houston tomorrow night. He and two other racists killed James Byrd Jr. in 1998 by dragging him behind a pickup truck in East Texas. Fox 4's Blake Hansen has more on the significance of tomorrow's execution. Blake. Heather and Steve King's co-defendant, Sean Barry, is serving life in prison. Another co-defendant, Lawrence Brewer, was executed in 2011. So this execution of King tomorrow night is the last act of justice in a disturbing crime. Early Sunday, June 7, 1998, a rural road in Jasper, Texas, became a landmark for an act of hate. John William King, Lawrence Brewer, and Sean Barry were in a Ford F-150 pickup truck and came upon James Bird Jr. The 49-year-old Bird, who was disabled, was walking home from his niece's bridal shower and accepted their offer for a ride. They beat him, chained him to the back of the truck by his ankles, and dragged his body zigzagging for three miles the first two of which he was still alive his body tore to pieces and left outside a black cemetery at the time i viewed the body i, th I couldn't recognize it because it was under rec uh, recognition and uh i looked and i looked i looked three or four times hold your hand up you went shame when you did it hold your hand up authorities quickly captured the three killers the FBI was brought in to investigate. The murder drew outrage in the small town and around the world. The headlines went all the way to the White House. I ask for your thoughts and your prayers to be with the family of Mr. Byrd today. Prosecutors went on to discover King, the mastermind of the attack, was a white supremacist. King's body covered in racist tattoos, professing Aryan pride. One even shows a black man hanging. Prosecutors also obtained a welcome letter King wrote for a hate group called the Confederate Knights of America. One expert testified the murder itself was meant to stoke fear by leaving the body out in the open in the front of a cemetery. I believe Mr. King uh, has a deep-seated uh, idea that blacks are the root cause of some of his failure. Despite the evidence, King maintained his innocence. He went to trial in 1999. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. I hereby sentence you to death by lethal injection. King has long battled the death sentence in court. But in October, the Supreme Court declined to hear his case. Wednesday night, more than 20 years after the gruesome crime, his life is expected to come to an end in a much more humane way than the crime that got him there in the first place. Bird's killing helped prompt the state of Texas and Congress to pass hate crime legislation. King is set to die by lethal injection just after 6 p.m. tomorrow.